Good morning, children. All of us know that food is one of the basic necessities for our survival. Have you ever thought, what happens to the food that we eat every day? To know about it, we have to study digestion and the digestive system. So today, our topic for discussion is the digestive system. Why do we humans require a digestive system? You know children, the food that we eat is complex. So it cannot be utilized as such in the body. It must be changed into a soluble, absorbable form to get absorbed by the blood for distribution in the body. Now what is digestion? Digestion is the breakdown of natural occurring foodstuffs into diffusible form or you can say digestion is any change which makes the food soluble and of such chemical nature that they can be absorbed through living membranes. So today we will learn about the different parts of the digestive system, the alimentary canal, the digestive glands in general and then we'll study in detail about the different parts of the mouth, the different types of teeth, their functions, the structure of the tooth. We will also study about the three salivary glands. Now children, the digestive system consists of the alimentary canal and the digestive glands. The alimentary canal consists of the following organs. The mouth, esophagus, stomach, the small intestine and the large intestine. The alimentary canal is a muscular tube which starts with the mouth and ends at the anus. It is about 9 meters long and is highly coiled in certain regions especially in the small intestine. The digestive glands that we will study are salivary glands, liver and the pancreas. Now children, in this diagram you can see, in this diagram you can see this is the mouth, this is the esophagus, this is the stomach. Your small intestine starts from here. This is your small intestine. This is your large intestine. And this is the rectum and the anus. So these are the parts of your digestive system. These are your salivary glands. This is your liver. And this is your pancreas. So mouth, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine, they constitute your elementary canal. The liver, pancreas and the salivary glands, they are the glands which secrete certain enzymes and therefore help in digestion. Now we'll start with the mouth. The mouth of the oral cavity is a space where the food is chewed and mixed with saliva. The lips are the front limits of the mouth. The lips help in closing the mouth, sucking and sipping liquid. They help in speaking and they also help in perceiving sensations of touch and heat. The tongue helps in manipulating the food. The tongue is a muscular organ. It helps in manipulating the food while chewing and mixing with saliva, helps in tasting the food, help in, helps in cleaning the food particles from the teeth after eating and also speaking. The teeth play a very special role. They cut and break the food into smaller bits. Why? The small size bits, they have a relatively large surface area for the enzymes. So, the enzymes can act in a better manner and digestion can act better. 
and teeth also help in speaking and they add to the facial beauty. Now we'll study about the different types of teeth and function. Now in humans, we have four types of teeth. They are incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Before we study the teeth, all of us should know that mammals and especially humans have different kinds of teeth, teeth which are different in shape. Therefore, they are called heterodont. In lizard and frog, they have similar kind of teeth, so they are called homodont. Now, children, you can see over here, the front teeth are called the incisors. The next teeth to the incisors are called the canines. These are your canines over here. Then comes your premolars. And last are your molars. The incisors are the four front teeth in the center of each jaw. Their cutting edges are broad, sharp, chisel-like and they are used for biting and cutting food. Canines are one on either side of the incisors in each jaw. These are conical and sharply pointed for holding and tearing the food. The premolars are two on each side in each jaw next to the canines. Each premolar has two hill-like projections or cusps on its surface and hence they are known as cuspids. Molars are the last three teeth on each side in each jaw. They are helpful as they grind and crush the food. And the last molar of each side in each jaw is called wisdom tooth. The wisdom tooth are so called because they appear last at an age of about 70 to 20 years when the human body is reaching maturity. Now children, in mammals there are two sets of teeth. One is the milk teeth which is also called deciduous teeth or the temporary teeth and they have the permanent teeth. The milk teeth erupts when the child is about 7 to 8 months old and it is shed off or it falls out after some time and is replaced by the permanent teeth. Now humans have 8 incisors, 4 canines, 8 premolars and 12 molars in all. Now we come to the dental formula. What is a dental formula? The number of permanent teeth of mammals is usually indicated in a formula in which the number of incisors, canines, premolars and molars is given strictly in the same order for one half of each jaw. This is called the dental formula. Now you can see children in a child the number of incisors, canines, premolars and molars are 2102 by 2102 which is equal to 20. In adolescence, they have 2122 by 2122 which is equal to 28. In adults, they have 2123 by 2123 which is equal to 32 that is along with the wisdom teeth. This is the structure of a tooth. This is of incisors and canines. This is of premolars and molars. This is incisor canines, this is premolars and molars. Now each tooth consists of a part which is above the gum. This is your gum over here and your gum is over here. So the part above the gum is called the crown. This is the crown and the part below the gum is called the root. This part is embedded in a cup like socket of the jaw bone okay now the root consists of a single process of fang there's a single process of fang as in incisors and canines or of two processes of fangs as in premolars and lower molars and three in upper molars this neck is a small constriction between the root and the crown if you take a vertical section of a tooth 
it shows the following parts. This is your enamel or the ivory. It is the material which covers the crown. It is the hardest substance in the body. Here, this is the enamel. Next comes the dentine. The dentine forms the bulk of the tooth. It is harder than both bone, but not as much as the enamel. Here, you find the dentine over here. Next comes to the pulp cavity. Now, this pulp is the soft connective tissue contained in the central space of the tooth. It consists of blood capillaries, lymph vessels and nerve fibers. This is the pulp, pulp over here. Okay. And then you have the cement. This is the cement over here. The cement is another bone like structure covering and fixing the tooth in position. Next we come to the salivary glands. Now saliva is secreted by three pairs of salivary glands, parotids, submandibular glands and sublingual glands. First we come to the parotid glands. They are located just in front of and below each ear. The submandibular glands, they are located close to the inner side of the lower jaw on each side. The sub sublingual glands, they are located below the tongue. So the three glands are parotid, submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Now saliva is slightly acidic. It contains water, salts, mucus and it contains an enzyme which is called salivary amylase or tylen. Now let's learn the functions of saliva. Saliva moistens and lubricates the inner lining of the mouth and surface of tongue to facilitate speaking and swallowing. Saliva moistens and lubricates food which help in swallowing. It acts as a solvent dissolving food particles. Saliva helps food particles to stick together to form bolus so that they can be swallowed in a mass. Saliva helps in digesting starch. Saliva contains an enzyme which is called tiling or salivary amylase. This converts starch into maltose. Saliva cleans the mouth and tends to destroy the germs to prevent tooth decay. Now dryness in the mouth gives a feeling of thirst to replenish body water. Thus saliva aids in water balance in the body. So children, today we studied about the four types of teeth, incisors, canines, premolars and molars and the three salivary glands, parotids, submandibular and sublingual. Next class, we will study about the other parts of the digestive system. Okay, have a nice day. Have a nice day, children. And thank you.